Hey everybody, welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here, finally getting some clear skies here. Um, there's still some thin, wispy clouds in the upper atmosphere, but overall, I think I can work with this. So it's about five o'clock and hopefully I'll be setting up here soon, but tonight I'm gonna be targeting the Witch Head Nebula. I originally planned to image the Angel Nebula but the scene conditions, according to the forecast, are going to be really poor this evening. Um, just flat out bad. I mean, just not good at all. So, um, and this, you know, you've heard me mention things about pixel scale, image scale, that, so, that sort of thing, guiding scale. This is, you know, scene conditions really uh, play into that. So you want to get as much leeway on that as you can. So in nights of bad seeing, Generally, it's better to go for wider angle, wider field of view targets because they'll have a more forgiving guiding error and um, you'll you'll get a better result that way. So that's what we're going to be targeting tonight. And uh, in a moment here, we'll get set up and get things going. set up tonight got the William Optics 71 GT the guide scope my EQ 6R Pro it's been hyper tuned got the Canon 77D modded all hooked up to the i7 laptop all right so my game plan for the evening was to do and actually this is gonna be a three night ordeal I'm gonna try and get 60 frames total. Now these are at ISO 800. They're gonna be 10 minute subs. And my goal is to get 20 of these a night over the next three nights. According to the forecast, uh, the weather should be clear enough for me to get three nights of, of uh, imaging in, hopefully, fingers crossed, right? But anyway, that's my game plan for this target. Uh, I know it's a really faint nebula, so it's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of stacked images to really get a good signal to noise ratio on this thing. So that's what my setup is for the evening. And that's what I would recommend for you if you were using either a stock or modded DSLR. If you're shooting ISO 800, you're going to want to do at least 8 to 10 minute subs. And you're going to have to take into account your location too. You know, I am using a CLS filter on this thing. Um, light pollution filter but you know if you're at a darker site you might get away with not using one and you'll have to make adjustments accordingly do some test shots around that but that i think that's a good baseline i'm in the yellow zone okay so portal five and um i think the iso 800 at eight to ten minutes sub length is going to be the sweet spot for this but stay tuned we'll see uh, how this test shot comes up and we'll go from there man it's a cold one tonight um kind of had a breakthrough tonight finally figured out how to get the plate solve feature working properly on apt i didn't realize you had to download a separate plug-in program which i'll show you guys here if you have not used that feature before uh it is an absolute joy and a weight lifted off my shoulders it has made getting my go-to setup so much quicker and easier so if you go to this site here, you can download the Plane Wave 2 plugin, install it, and I'll show you all how to do that because it's pretty quick and easy. And then you can use it in APT to plate solve for go to and centering of your target. So, yeah, it's been a, a huge help. All right, guys, so I actually started the edit in Astro Pixel Processor. I'm, I'm still learning the program. Um, I just started using it, but I assure you, once I get a better hang of it, I'll be doing a tutorial on that to follow soon. But um, I'm really pleased. I will say this much about that program. It has got one of the easiest user interfaces I've ever seen on an image editing program, especially one that's dedicated for astrophotography. Um, it, it literally tells you step one, two, three, all the way down to nine, and then it walks you through it step by step. Now, there are some areas there that are adjustable according to your needs, your data, 
and th those are the parts I'm trying to figure out. But really, out of the box, it is really easy to pick up and start using. So if you're not using picks inside already or you find that you're just not quite getting the most out of your data just in Photoshop, highly recommend looking at Astro Pixel Processor. Anyway, let's get started here. This is a stack. This was stacked in Astro Pixel Processor with some uh, minor stretching done to the data. And um, this is a stack of, I believe it was 63 frames at 10 minutes a piece. And as you can see here, there's still some uh, some gradients here I got to deal with. And in this particular photo, I'm going to try and get a little creative with that. But as usual, let's go ahead and uh, check the image size, what this thing is. I don't like working with huge, huge files, but let's change that. Let's go to 10 by 15, 300 DPI, and there we go. It's a little bit smaller frame. It'll be a little bit quicker to make these adjustments. All right, let's duplicate, duplicate the layer. And let's go ahead and do Gradient Exterminator. If you don't have that plugin already, I highly recommend you downloading it. Uh, you can download it here on this site. This is Russell Croman's site and download this plugin for uh, Photoshop. It does a really good job of neutralizing gradients. Doesn't always work perfectly, but it does a really good job overall. So let's see what we get here with this click. Okay, that, that toned down a lot of that green and red that was going on there. So let's flatten that out. Duplicate. Let's look at the levels. See what levels look like coming into here. There's there's some room there for adjustment. We can bring this back a little bit. Okay. And let's go ahead and crop out. This is a stacking artifact. Something I've noticed, and this has become almost a regular thing when I'm imaging. And I'm having to. I'm starting before the meridian flip. I do the meridian flip, and then the other half of the session goes on. This is, I believe, where that's happening. The the framing is not quite exactly on par with the pre-meridian flip uh, composition, and I'm getting these these weird lines here, usually just in the sides of the frame. But in this case, we can just kind of crop that out and still get a still get a good composition. All right, so that takes care of that. You know, a lot of this is really taste, guys. As far as you know, what uh, for me anyway. I don't like this green here, and some of this is H alpha, I believe, because I've seen this in other people's astro photos. There's like a halo of red right around the profile here of the Witch Head Nebula, and I just don't really like the way that looks. So we're gonna, I'm gonna try and pull some of that out using selective color, actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and we're gonna sample the offending pixel. Let's try in the reds and see what happens. Boom. Okay, so that toned down some of that a little bit. And I'll be honest with you, this is something I just kind of fool around with until it looks pleasing to me. Um, let's try the blues. Click down here again and see what happens. Okay. All right, that's looking a little more color neutral, and we still have some color there. I'm going to go with that. Let's look at that. There you go. So we neutralized a lot of that gradient issue there. Now, granted, I understand you're pulling out, you're pulling out other colors too, but I'm going to show you a way to kind of fix that as well. We're going to do an uh, adjustment on the stars as well to bring back some of the blue and orange here. <clears throat> Let's run that gradient exterminator one more time. See what happens. Okay. I'm pretty good with that. That's that's pretty solid. Knocking out those gradients. All right. So, now that we've achieved that, let's select these stars and work on some star color here. Always want to work in in layers. Um Let's do this again. Color range good. Expand to Modify one feather one. Okay, Control H. Let's hide that selection. Let's Control U. Bring up the hue saturation, and let's just go with blues right now in cyan's and see what happens when we pump a little more blue and in, in cyan into the stars. Okay, getting some artificial. So there's not a whole lot there. So let's see if there's enough 
yellows and reds to crank up the star color a little bit. Let's see, yellows, reds. Okay, that helped a little with the orange stars. There we go. You see the difference there? See that? Before, after. All right, so for the blue stars, let's bring this mask back up so you can see it. Okay, for the blue stars, we're going to use, um, we're just going to manually select those. That's, that's what I did on this image. I mean, you can go through and select all of them, but um, really it's just to key the large ones that I want to bring out some blue. So let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is manually select these blue stars here. Okay, so alternate. We're going to individually select these stars that were blue or should be blue. Hold shift while clicking to make additional selections. And just kind of pick through the ones, at least for me, that stand out. That I know used to have a little bit of blue in them <laughs> before I got stretched out of them. Now this is kind of like a reactive way of doing this. You can do some color preserving stretches, but I find that just stretching in general in Photoshop just does not yield the best results for stars. It, it does fine on the nebula data, but the stars, it doesn't matter for me how many star masks, what size they are, they always just get a really, really harsh, blown out look to them. And I can't ever bring it back. And what I love about Astro Pixel Processor, if you notice, these have a much more subtle, softer glow to them. Um, and they're not as harsh. So I, I really do like that about Astro Pixel Processor. All right, let's just, for the sake of the tutorial, let's just go with that there, okay? Let's go into Color Balance. Image Adjustments, Color Balance. And we're just going to drag the Cyan slider down a little bit here to get some of that blue back in those stars. And let's deepen it. Let's not aqua. But at the same time, we don't want to go too heavy. And you can, you can control the opacity of this, but to get some blue back. I don't know this is artificial, but we can do about a 80% opacity. Let's control H. Let's look at that. Okay, so we restored some of the color into the into the orange stars. There's really not a whole lot of data left in here. You can play with um, color range to try and duplicate what the blue star color would be, but really it's uh, I've got to do a better job at preserving that star color data before stretching. But even so, that's pretty much it on this image here. The only other thing I would do to maybe bring out a little bit more detail, make it pop, is go into Camera Raw Filter. Okay. And let's play with these sliders here. Let's get a little more clarity on that Witch Head Nebula. A little dehaze. Oh, not too much. A little vibrance, a little saturation, just a taste, a little bit. Bring up that orange a little bit, those orange stars, yellow stars. That's good there. And clarity you can really go crazy with, but it just, I think that just overdoes it. So maybe right about there, that'll pull up more of that nebula detail in the witch head. And I'm happy with that. There we go. That makes that pop a little bit more. And the last thing I would do on this is duplicate the layer. Let's minimize those stars a bit. They're a little overwhelming in this picture. So what we're going to do is select color range. It's probably my favorite tool here, guys. That looks good. And let's see how that selection is. Not selecting some of the nebula. Let's let's uh let's undo that. Let's let's go back and do that. Select color range and let's change the fuzziness a little bit there there we go there we go now it's just selecting the stars expand on that a little bit select just like before expand to modify feather one 
and let's pull up that minimum filter. It's under filter, other, minimum. And for here, you know, one point, nothing too crazy, but that dials us back a good bit. 1.4, I like that. Make sure this is on preserve roundness, too, when you're doing that. All right, let's take control H. Let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah, look at the difference. Look at that star city, gone. Cleans it up, makes that nebula pop. You still got some stars in here. Let's dial back some of this noise, too. I noticed when zooming in on this photo, there's a lot of noise in here, and Camera Raw Filter does a fantastic job of neutralizing noise. Let's go into that tab. It's right here. And let's take a closer look. What we got here is a lot of luminance noise here. Soften that out. And just get rid of some of that color noise. Boom. It's not gone, but it sure as heck dials it back. Smooths that out. All right. Let's put that on. There we go. All right, guys, and that's it. That is the Witch's Head, Witch Head Nebula, NGC 1909. Um, next video, like I said, once I get a better handle on Astro Pixel Processor, I'll do a video on that because it really is an awesome and very helpful um, astro astrophotography imaging platform. If you're just now getting into this and you're trying to figure out the best way to go, I think it's a great not only starting point but end solution for astro imaging. And then just bringing them into Photoshop uh, to do your final touches, your noise reduction, sharpening, you know, if there's other gradients you need to deal with and stuff. But I would do all your stretching in Astral Pixel Processor. Well, guys, that concludes the video. If you enjoyed the video, you got something out of it, uh, please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe so you won't miss out on any future videos that will be covering more tutorials, imaging sessions, and gear. Until next time, clear skies. Oh,